as we get to the election, is there any direction or being discussed, and I'm not asking for any secrets, about should the right of center parties like conservatives and united work together on becoming the party uh, in power on October the 19th? Yes, they should. Uh, there's no question. Look, I, you know, I have spent my, you know, a good chunk of my adult life either supporting free enterprise policies or participating directly uh, as an MLA. There's nobody that cares more about this province, frankly, and the need to unite the center right to make sure that the left doesn't win as a result of stupid vote splitting uh, than me. Um, but, you know, I will also say that you have to be very careful with polls. You know, you started out the interview right at the beginning by talking about what was happening in Europe and the United States. And you can see very how quickly things change in the United States after the attempted assassination of President Trump. It looked like, you know, for several weeks after, like it, this is this is done and dusted. He was going to win for sure. Yeah. Right. You know, that yeah. famous photo of him with his fist in the air, et cetera. But then what happened? Biden steps aside, Kamala Harris comes on board, and suddenly there's just a complete change in direction. And things can change very quickly. You saw that in Europe too, where the uh, like the defense. extreme right was supposed yeah the extreme right was supposed to win European elections. They came third in, in UK. Uh, in the UK, yeah. Well, that followed more. The polls were more accurate in UK in predicting at least that yeah. there would be a big upset. Yeah. But but I guess what I'm saying is you have to be so careful about polls. They are notoriously wrong. You and I both know in 2013 when I didn't run in that election that the, the, the uh, you know, for the two years prior, the BC Liberals and BC Conservatives were tied in the polls. Sometimes the BC Cons were ahead. And that's mostly because of confusion between the federal party and the provincial party. Now, what typically happens, and, and by the way, two weeks before the election was called, the BC Liberals are 23 points behind the NDP. Every single pundit and pollster said that the BC Liberals were going to lose that election. There was not a single one that said we had any chance. Now, I didn't run in that election, but I supported my old team. Right. Uh, and, and I remember telling my business friends, just would you stop whining and complaining and giving up on the fact that they, I said the election hasn't even started. And when the election did start, guess what? We ended up winning majority government against surprised all the pundits and pollsters. Now, here's what's different this time. The BC Conservatives have really gotten you know, uh, the wind in their sails as a result of the confusion between the federal party and the provincial. There is no relationship between the two. And, no. I, I, you know, I think the biggest challenge, we've tried to come to an agreement with the uh, with John Rostad. I know John well. You do too, John. Yeah. He's, I, John's not a bad person. No. Uh, but I, I think the challenge, as I always say, is that this election um, is, uh, you know, and I won't feel, you know, we're not going to end up at 10%. I guarantee you that. But even if we end up at 20% or 25%, I won't be happy. I won't be happy unless the NDP have lost. So I think they, you know, we, we, we do have to be smart about this election, but I think candidate quality really matters. You know, we, you talked about healthcare. We've recruited several doctors that are running for us. We have, you know, uh, I, I trained locomotive engineers who are Teamster members. We've got teachers, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got a balance of experience like Shirley Bond and, and folks like that, Todd Stone, Peter Millibar, myself and new candidates of very high quality. Um, it's very uneven quality in the BC Conservatives, to say the least. I mean, their candidate for Prince George Mackenzie has been in the news just in the last couple of days. You know, right. she's posted yeah. things that, that suggest that 5G cell towers are genocidal weapons that caused COVID. And, and that, uh, you know, um, what's the other thing? The credit cards are a sign of the Antichrist and, and the rapture is coming. Well. Uh, you know, uh, like those are not candidates that are going to be able to solve the big challenges we face in this province no. around natural resources and healthcare and all the rest of it.